Hey everyone, my name is Michael. I'm the customer success lead at Xano, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use a, a reverse geocoding external API with Xano. Uh, so reverse geocoding, all it does is it takes uh, latitude and longitude coordinates and gives us a bunch of information about that point. Uh, oftentimes the formatted address, uh, etc, etc. Uh, so, you know, I actually want to show you first this website called uh, public-apis.io just has a lot of different um, free or starting t or freemium uh, APIs that you can use and I found this one called uh, geocode.io um, and just signed up for a free trial account so um, let me jump over to their documentation here so anytime you're dealing with uh, external APIs it's important to read um, their documentation to see things like the parameters, uh, maybe headers are required, what the response is going to look like, um, just so you can understand all the different nuances of working with their API. So I'm going to jump over, um, they have this section for reverse geocoding right here, and we're going to do this reverse geocoding of a single coordinate. So right away they show us the HTTP request. Um, you have this curl command here, it tells you the parameters, and it shows you an example response here. And look, you can even click this link to try this in your browser, uh, because your browser actually works as a front end, so you can actually just paste in um, a valid endpoint and you'll get data back. Um, but anyways, um, this is great. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to jump to Xano, I'm going to add an endpoint here. I'm going to start from scratch, and I'll just call this um, reverse geo example, and I'm going to hit save. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go into our function stack, and we're going to add a new function, um, this external API request. Uh, so a couple things here, um, you know, one, if we have the curl command, we can import the curl, um, or we can specify the uh, URL of the, a, the external API endpoint that we're going to do. Uh, we also have control over the method, whether it's uh, get, post, etc. Um, we can define the JSON parameters and also the headers. So let's go back to um, the documentation here. Um, if you see this curl command right here, um, you'll notice that it has these parameters um, at the end right here. So anytime you see this question mark and then some kind of characters or letters after in the equal sign, um, that signifies one of the parameters. And you can also see that here on the left side. So Q is taking in the latitude and longitude. As you can see, it's um, following the Q right there. And then you see there's also the API key. Um, so there's that and sign. So after there's already that question mark, maybe you'll see that and sign and then you'll have the API key and then the value will be your API key. And that's often you get that when signing up for one of um, these websites. So let's actually start with the most basic form which is just this HTTPS all the way to reverse. I'm simply gonna copy that and come back into Xano. And let's go ahead and just simply paste that in. Uh, now we know that um, there are these different um, parameters here. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead and uh, specify these under these JSON parameters. And we we'll wanna do this in order. So the first one we're gonna do is that queue. So the path is the queue and the value, let's go ahead and just take these coordinates for now um, and just get this working. And then I'll show you how to make this a little more flexible. So I'll go ahead and paste in the value here. And then additionally, we're going to want that API key. So it's um, API underscore key. I'm just going to copy this, um, come back to Xano, hit set again, put that as the path. And in the value, um, I have my API key right here. I'll probably delete this after now that I've shown all you, and I'll just paste this in as the value here. Okay, so according to the documentations, that's all we needed. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Um, so when I run this, we can see we get this nice big response. We see the um, request here, the response, um, and then nested in the response actually is our result. And that looks like the example result there. 
And you see they're giving us a few different addresses here. A lot of time with reverse geocoding, um, they'll give you the address that is most exact and then a few that are a little less exact. Um, but always read their documentation to find out exactly the information they're gonna give you. But okay, great. So next what I wanna show you is we have this big res response, but let's say that we only wanna get uh, these results. We don't care about all these headers in this request. We just wanna see the actual data. So I'm gonna click this copy result as JSON. And next we're gonna go ahead and create a variable here. I'm gonna to go to data manipulation, create a variable. And we'll call this just uh, results we want. And now in the value here, I'm gonna hit this drop down. And right where my API one variable is, so what we're returning, that full response, I can hit subpath right here. And I can actually just paste in that JSON uh, response I just copied, hit next. And now we can uh, visually go down a path to basically parse the data to get exactly what we want. Uh, so now I can go hit the response, the result, and then the results. And now this is the index, so all those a list of all those different objects I'm getting. Remember I said um, from the most or the closest uh, address to the least nearest. So um, I'm just going to leave all these for now, and I'll show you what that looks like. So if I hit save, and now if I change the result to uh, results we want variable, and hit update, and I run this. Um, we'll see now we're just getting uh, that data back. So this is all that data we want. Okay, so now that that's working, um, let's go ahead and make this even more flexible. Let's make it dynamic, right? So the great thing is about Xano when we sort of um, programmatically explode all this information out is you can make these values um, dynamic. So. For example, here in my database, where we have my merchant table, I went ahead and added some merchants and put in their um, geo point locations. And the way to do that, if you're not familiar, is you'd hit these field type, geography. I did a point, and I'll just say this is example here. You can actually double click in here, and you can actually even um, search a specific merchant. It'll come up, um, I did Firestone Grill there and then you could add the point right on there. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and just delete that because I already have that data here. Okay, so we know we have our geo information. So let's go back to our API and into this um, API we created. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull that latitude and longitude from my merchant records and find the actual formatted address um, for each of those merchants, okay? So let's go ahead and let's do um, add a new entry and I'm gonna to go to database request. I'm gonna say, get a record from the merchant. And I actually need to add an input here so it knows what merchant. So I'm gonna do a table reference to the merchant table. Let's go back into this get record and I'll simply just map that value to the input and we'll just call this uh, merchant. And I'll hit save. And let's go ahead and uh, bring this to the top. And let's go ahead, I'm gonna hide these, and I just wanna see the merchant response because I wanna see where my latitude and longitude is nested in there and how that format is. So let's go ahead, put in merchant one. And so here's my latitude and longitude. So we can see um, it's gonna be nested within geo and then within data. And now we can access our latitude and longitude. So let's see how, um, let's go ahead and look at our API and see how that wants it formatted. So it looks like latitude with a comma and then the longitude. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create another variable that'll just store that latitude and longitude so we can have it dynamic per our record. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to data manipulation. I'm gonna do create a variable, okay? And I'm gonna call this just lat and longitude. And in the value here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the drop down and get our merchant variable. And then I'm gonna use dot notation so I can drill down to exactly what I want. So I'm gonna say dot geo, uh, dot data, and then the first one's gonna be latitude. Okay, so that'll give us our latitude. And next, I'm just gonna add a filter here and I'm gonna do concatenation. So I'm gonna search for concat. And the value that I'm concatenating, which just puts two strings of text together, 
Um, the first one, I'll hit the drop down and I'll get the lo longitude now. So I'll do merchant and I'll say geo because that's the field name, then dot data, and then LNG for longitude. In the separator, remember the parameter needs that comma. I'm just going to go ahead and put a comma in here and hit save. So let's go ahead and return that variable to make sure that looks fine. I'll hit save. Let's run this. And as you can see, we have our latitude and longitude coordinates now. OK, so let me go ahead and drag that right after my merchant. Let's go ahead and then hide this stuff. And so here in the API, I can go ahead now and, pre and uh, replace this Q value, because it's one of our parameters. I can go ahead and hit this drop down and select our variable here and hit update and hit save. So let me change this response again um, back to the results we want and hit save. And let me go ahead and run this. So we'll get merchant run here. And here we go. So we can see now we have the address components. Here's our format address, latitude and longitude. And then it looks like it's giving us um, the next closest information. So that looks like it's working really well. Let's go ahead and put in merchant two here and hit run. And now you can see the information um, has changed. Okay, so I wanted to um, take only get the formatted address. So let's take um, this just one step further. Um, I'm gonna go ahead back into the results we want here. Uh, but first I'm going to actually go back and get my full um, API one response now. And let me just go ahead and run this. And I just wanna be able to programmatically um, or visually, I should say, uh, drill back down just to the formatted address. So as I did before, I'm gonna hit the subpath of that API one response, paste in that JSON, and we're gonna to go to response, result, results, and now I'm gonna go into zero because that's the um, most accurate address according to the documentation and select that formatted address. And I'm just gonna call this uh, the address variable now and hit save. And now let's go ahead and return just the address of my merchants. So we can say merchant two is 3494 uh, 18th Street, San Francisco. Merchant one is gonna be 1001 Higuera Street, slow. And then merchant three is gonna be 500 Cypress Street, Pismo Beach. Um, so let's take it even one step further. Let's say I actually wanna store that address into my database. So let me jump to my database, go to merchant, and let's make sure we have a place to put that. I'm just gonna add a text field here called address and hit save. And I'm gonna jump back to the API very quickly. And I'm just gonna add one more step here and that's gonna be a database request. It's gonna be edit a record um, of the merchant. So we're gonna update this record. So the uh, field value here is gonna be that same input. And here for all my fields, I'm actually gonna hide everything uh, but the address because I don't wanna update any of those. Um, and in the address here, I'm gonna select that variable I created called address and hit save. And let's go ahead, let's name this um, updated merchant and hit save. And now I'll just return that updated merchant. And so now when we run this, let's go ahead, I'll run three first. Uh, we can see now, here's my merchant hoagies, here's the address, there's the geolocation. Uh, let's do it for two. Um, you can see now, here's the address in San Francisco for El Buen Sabor. And lastly, Firestone. Let's go ahead and make that address added. So. Now, if I jump back to my database, you'll see the address is stored accordingly. Oops, let me go ahead and expand that. Yeah, so there you have it. There's a quick tutorial on using uh, a reverse geocoding API with Xano.